do here is make a pitch lap. And I've, um, since my pennies were put on with pitch, they'd knock off very easily. So I knocked them all off and uh, cleaned it up a little bit. So I'm going to show you my easy way of making pitch lap. I call it a piece of method. What I do is take a piece of aluminum foil on a clean surface and flat surface and pull it up all the way around. And then trim off the excess. Basically, I'm just going to make a mold, same size as my tool. And then I'm going to pour or melt pitch into my mold. And there we go. Nice and square. The bottom. And then carefully take it off to form a mold. And it's got a few wrinkles in the bottom, but you take your finger and square those up. And so, now I have a mold. Once I have the mold, um, I can either uh, melt some pitch and pour it in. Uh, <clears throat> but if you have a um, flat top cook stove and your part's not too big, you can just uh, melt it right in place and you don't have to smell at the kitchen as much. Just spoon in some, um, some crushed pitch, enough to make a about a quarter inch layer of pitch or so all the way around. Turn the heat on to low because this stuff will catch on fire. You can start a fire with pitch if you get it too hot. Don't want to do that. Pitch I'm using is uh, universal photonics. It's Swedish Pitch number 65. Uh, a lot of people use Google. Just a few more pieces here and there. Okay, looks like my pitch is just about melted. Um, one of the things I want to do is uh, take the lap and make it sticky. Let's take a, some acetone, just rubbing over the pitch and lap and it will dry in a few seconds and it will make the pitch stick to the uh, to the part very nicely. Cooktop's not real flat, you might want to rotate it, but it looks like I've got a nice level layer pitch here melted. You can even take a pick, some pit, toothpicks and See how it looks? Looks like it's looks pretty good. So I will simply just slide it off to let it cool. Turn my burner off. And uh, at this point you don't want it to cool hard, you want it to cool to a taffy state where it's just flexible and what I'm going to do is slide it off and onto my 
let the smile blend. And it's probably a good idea to have these warmed up just a little bit. Not not cold because it'll certainly it'll make things worse if it's cold. And this shouldn't take very long to come to the taffy state. Yeah. The little table trick didn't work too well. So that's about perfect. So now we're going to simply slide this off onto our lens. And it, now it will sag to the to the curve of the lens. And we want to push our foil back. And you can't wait too long doing this. And take our our tool and drop it, center it up good and drop it on and press. I hope you can see. Step on it. Uh, add some weight to it. So I set this aside and let it cool down for a little bit with some weight on it. And now uh, it should be pretty, pretty good. Yeah, actually. One, one nice thing about this method is that it. Yeah, for especially for steep curves, it, uh, it's a lot easier than doing a lot of hot pressing. And now we can just uh, pull, pull it right off. We've got a nice layer of pinch on there. So the next thing we want to do is to put channels in it. And for that, I use a torch. Big knife, and you can mark off channels if you want. I just do it by a ball. Just get them roughly an inch wide. They don't have to be exact. Just don't make them too narrow or too wide. And some people use a saw to saw it, so it's just kind of messy. Uh, you can use a hot wire or, or just melt, melt it with a with an iron, but I get my knife to work just not too hot, but hot enough, and I start the middle just a little bit off center, go across, like so, a few times, and wipe off my blade, both sides on some paper, and then go across it one more time just to make sure it hasn't flowed back across. Look and see if I've got it deep enough. I think I have. Heat up my knife again. And about an inch over. And a wipe a bit. It don't matter. Kind of saw it back and forth. Make sure it goes to the bottom. Wipe it off. And then once across. Too cold, it's not going to penetrate the fish. 
too hot, it'll make too, too, uh, too wide of a melted area around it. So it takes a little bit of practice. squeezed out a little bit over the edge so just take a razor blade and a case knife handle and use it like a hammer and chisel like cutting diamonds I guess I'll just go around the edge cut off the what extends over the edge now I want to go in about a oh an eighth of an inch on either side of my grooves and tap it and you see it break into the channel. And you can take it, lift it up. You can see these pieces come up. Now let me do it all the way across here. out these pieces and it's a makes a nice wide channel. If you don't do that it's it'll, it'll simply close up. So that's one. So I want to go through and do all my channels that way. Just about an eighth of an inch on either side of it. Kind of angle the razor blade in a little bit to the to the center. a little bit of practice. Oh, there you go. A completed um, channeled lap ready to, ready to uh, cold press and get started. Uh, I've got it all cleaned up. It's nice and dry. Um, and then I want to take um, do it do a cold press, and I still do that dry. But I take a piece of um, this is a piece of bag uh, produce bag from Walmart. Um, I have my wife save them. They're extremely thin. They're like I think it's like seven microns or ridiculously thin. I put that between my part and um, the the uh, lap pitch lap. And since this is a lens, I'm going to be careful about the back side. I'm going to take and put some weight on top of it. Protect the back side. When I start polishing, I'll put uh, some protective tape, tape on the back side. So I'm stacking up 15 pounds here. And, and I'll give this, uh, make sure it's centered up well. And give this uh, oh half an hour or so to to press, and then we'll be ready to start polishing. <laughs> 